Got another pole garage video update. It's kind of unrefined and scattered, but hopefully this info can help you with ideas on your build or you know, not making the same mistakes as me or whatever. So lots of talk in here. I'll start with the, the driveway. Uh, I hired a guy, Corey, uh, based on a friend of a friend recommendation. He seemed like a really great guy and I'm happy with the way it turned out. There's a few bird baths. I did hose this down 10 minutes ago just to kind of outline that, but every parking lot I ever see or asphalt job, it seems little bird bats are kind of unavoidable. So that's just to, to give you an idea what that looks like, but it does pitch toward the drain. So that's, uh, that's good. And he was able to kind of keep it flat up near the garage. The old driveway was slanted a whole bunch. So it's, it's much more level there and everything pitches out this way. Now, as far as the base, we, we did rip out the old driveway completely because it was all sorts of potholed and I didn't know what kind of base was under it. We did about four inches of, uh, he convinced me to use RCA. It's recycled concrete aggregate. A little bit cheaper than the three quarter modified, which is what I would personally recommend. Yeah, it's like the standard that you would use under an asphalt driveway. But the RCA is around $10 a ton and the three quarter modified more around like $30 a ton. Uh, figured give it a go because Corey said that it compacts much nicer, but after it was compacted, I just noticed there's a bunch of like trash and wood and things in it that like wood shouldn't be under your driveway. So in the future, I think I would always recommend using the three quarter modified. You just get a much better product, unless it depends on your area. Maybe they have better RCA where you're from. Now, after it was done, there was still about a four inch lip between here and the grade, and I guess a little bit, little bit of miscommunication. So I did have to have them come back out and help me doing a ramp down into the grass since I plan on leaving this grass. I dug this out with the Kubota and by hand, put some three quarter modified, compacted it, and then we did the same as on the driveway, two inches and two inches for a total of four inches. I was left with a bunch of asphalt, uh, which was great because then I threw it around the building and ran the compactor over it, which he graciously lent me. Uh, it got a little cold, as you can see, toward the end, but I was able to heat it, torch it, and get that uh, relatively flat. So nice little detail. I also dug out around my drain four inches and compacted a bunch around there since it always tends to erode around here. But now all the water dumps into the drain, works great. Good surface, don't care about it if it gets all beat up and dirty. You know, the puddles drive me a little crazy, but uh, it's fine. I'll get, I'll get used to it. It's not a big deal. Coming over here, I think you guys saw in the previous video that I wrapped up all the drainage, the perimeter drain around the building. My buddy Chuck came over, helped me out getting a mini split in, a stainless steel bracket off Amazon. So you can see how much humidity. And when you first fire this thing up after the door's been open, it's just pouring water out of it. So much humidity getting pulled out of the garage. And that's one of the main reasons I put a mini split in for the efficient heat and cooling, uh, but also just keep things dry in there. We got the uh, disconnect, the surge protector, green light means good. Over here, I got a six foot Arborvitae. Would you believe what that thing costs at a local nursery? If you buy only one, they kind of bang you over the head, but for uh, it's a six to seven foot planted, $188. I did, uh, that's a little crazy, but I did bring the, the soil level up and put a little retainer wall in there since I wanted to get as much height as I could out of it. And then added this pipe in case whatever these drains ever got clogged, this can flow continue out and go down any of one of those drains since my neighbor's property is a touch higher. I did hang up his Buddha picture for him and we got that. I said lots of talking guys so that's uh, so what this is but in the garage you'll notice we have more of an echo 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 because I went with closed cell spray foam uh, two inches of it and then on top of that they sprayed this fire guard fire retardant waterproof coating uh, it's a gray, which first thing Jen said when she came in here, she said, what made you go with gray? And I was like, oh, come on, babe. Like, you know, at first I uh, thought it, it did make it a little bit dimmer in here, but not a big deal. A couple mistakes I made with that. Uh, I allowed them since they said they were going to tape everything off. You know, they did kind of a, a, a sloppy line around the floor. So I went ahead and scraped that all and made, made that pretty clean. I told them they could leave the fan on, which that was also a mistake because now the, the, that's completely covered in gray stuff and the, the fan blades are uh, covered in spray foam. Can clean that off though, no big deal. Sorry if it sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not, you know, it's, it's fine. I'm happy. The garage is insulated. 
I just, I like to go over details so you guys can look for these things in your job. Uh, they did put some kind of fiberglass backer since this has vented gable and eaves. So they put a backer in there and then this is supposed to be completely sealed tight. He said you could fill the building with water and it would only go out the door, which is not true because it actually will, will go out these rubber membranes and well, anyway, I'm just trying to make sure this thing is as efficient as possible. And like over at the panel, uh, I was gonna go ahead to Home Depot and get some of that foamular, rigid, inch and a half. But he said, don't worry about doing that. We can shoot right behind there. And uh, at the end of the day, he said, yeah, we got it back 100%. I kind of was thinking, there's no way he did. So I went on the outside of the building, pulled the sheet metal back, and yeah, there's, there's nothing there. So what, now I know it's not a big deal. It's not a, a huge one. You can see where the building rep wasn't here. Uh, but that's going to create a little condensation pocket with the as, as the winter approaches and it's hot humid air inside cold outside It's going to sweat and and get on the inside of this cavity and then create mold mildew and then come the termites and the rot and everything else Well, I'll go ahead and get that spray foamed from the outside too and like I said another mistake without taping everything off I mean this was just they they masked off the box, but it was just sprayed all kind of sloppy around it. So I had to go back and repaint it because you guys know how I am. I get a little OCD sometimes. I think I mentioned it in a previous video, but I was able to raise this garage door eight inches. I had to unwind the springs and that is a little sketchy if you've ever done it. And I brought it up, the, the torsion up eight inches and, and the rails. Uh, so I was able to extend these as well with a piece that I cut off of each side here. I was able to save uh, it came off about another foot and a half or so and that's gonna that's great because that I got this up about eight or nine inches and up seven there So when we put the car lift in that door is getting as close as it possibly can to those trusses in the process I learned that this door is extremely heavy and when it's rolled all the way up the old brackets that they had supporting across these they had these going across the Trusses those are on the four foot on center. Sorry about the, the bright lights guys but those rails, when the door was up, these rails right here, you could see this bellying big time. And then I look at it and each one has one lag bolt into that. Speaking of, which was, which was splitting, I'm not gonna get up there on the ladder to show you, but the lag bolt was splitting and it's all hanging down on this. If that garage door fell, it would probably kill you. I mean, it'd break your neck or crush whatever's under it. So I did replace these with some square tubing and they're on top of the trusses. If you're gonna do a garage, I highly recommend going with that detail because you guys know lags, especially with a garage door, vibrating, going back and forth, they can get uh, loose over time. I'll show you what it looked like, the one that they had in there. These, each piece of angle was supported with just one of those little guys. Would it have lasted? Yeah, probably, but not worth having that big door fall on you. And since I cut those rails a little bit shorter, the garage door comes right up to the end of that. I did kink it. So in case somebody throws the door up super hard, it couldn't fly off because that'd be terrible. Here's a look at what the mini split is on the inside. We just threw a two by 10 across there, got the drain and the line set. Uh, I am going to be painting these black, I think. And so you see, uh, I'll probably be going back over. They actually left me with a seven extra gallons of this fire guard. I guess they ordered a little much, but honestly, they, they went on pretty thin with it everywhere. Like if you look around, I mean, you can still see the um, spray foam. So I'll probably get a paint sprayer and hit it one more time. What the heck? I got the stuff. It's $115 a gallon for that. Ex extremely expensive. Well, why the dungeon dark color? Well, my thought process was uh, the way you're going to have this spray foam, real uneven surfaces, uh, well, like a lot of horizontal surfaces. I figure all the dust and the dirt's gonna settle on there anyway, and then it's gonna end up looking kind of like it does in the carport. You see, these are our white walls, and then anything that's not vertical, you get covered in dirt. So why not just make the whole thing that color, right? Didn't, didn't think about the fact that you lose a lot of the light reflection. <laughs> Don't worry if it looks bland though. I will be again going with the black posts and I'm gonna paint that all around the garage door black too, along with the trusses, and then add some white. And once everything's full of junk, you guys, nobody's gonna notice. You see Jen's got her uh, box for the, for the boat. She covered with, this stuff was like $5 a yard, real cheap, and then recycled uh, foam from the attic. So that came out real nice. 
I'm like, you know, the piles of sand. I'm, uh, I'm just drying this sand out so it can, you know, get uh, pushed into these relief joints real easy because I'm going and using Sika Flex. If you guys ever use it on your concrete joints. With this sealant being self-leveling, it's really important to put some kind of backer in here because otherwise you'll be filling that inch crack up and wasting a ton of material. So you, I just push sand in there and then you can run the broom and leaves you a nice little, whatever it is, eighth or quarter inch deep. Some guys might argue if this was outside, water could get in there, expand and cause spalling or cracking, but inside definitely not a problem. And this is the same method I used on my driveway 10 years ago, never been a problem. Got just the right amount, and then I'll hit that with a scraper a day later, maybe two after it cures. I did go ahead and take a pneumatic needle scaler and ran around each of these posts just to open up the superficial layer of concrete, and I'll seek a flex each one of those too. Oh, well, it looks like that. And once that's all done with this spray foam barrier covering that rubber joint, because that rubber I found is not, yeah, it's very porous, the expansion material. Uh, this thing will quite literally be watertight, except for the door. You, know, you can hose it down, you're not gonna have to worry about water going up into the walls or nothing. Just wait for the sand to dry. You see how the concrete is soaking up the moisture. It's one of the reasons I'm gonna seal it, to help you know, prevent that. Not that it's a big deal, but it's good. It's pulling the uh, moisture out of the sand so I can spread that into the cracks easier. Another consideration if you guys plan on using spray foam with a build, uh, building wrap or not. I chose to use building wrap because and that way if you ever need to replace a piece of sheet metal or take it off, you can without it pulling the whole uh, wall through. But if you come look at this building at nighttime when we've had a hot humid day and then it cools down really quick, you'll notice you can see the outline of the two by fours. And the reason for that is because right behind this sheet metal, there is an air gap. It's not right on the insulation. You know, you can you can press it because that that building wrap kept. Uh, it's not. There's an air gap there. No, there's not between the two by fours and those holding the insulation in, holding the heat from the day. So the condensation will be slightly different on them. Now you might say, hey, well you could get moisture behind there, uh, but even if you do you get that coke can condensation behind it and there's ventilation these have channels vertical channels so it can dry out behind there which actually i i had pulled off that sheet the next day and saw behind there it was completely dry after it was all condensation the night before oh just something else to consider you know do you mind your building looking that way with the humidity is it gonna create mildew lines or something i mean these are all it's building science you know you have options Next day, and here's how we're looking. Got all those posts and relief cuts. Sika flexed is out here crawling around, filling them all the other night. And it should really cure for a few days. I'll leave it to sitting above, but you can see I did cut, cut one little section. All you do is run that with a razor blade, and then we'll end up with a nice clean line that everything can roll over. And you sweep, you, you drop a ball bearing or something, it's not gonna fall in there. Whatever, you get my point. Just a very nice detail for a floor. We're almost at the 28 day mark, and I have chosen to use a, a densifier followed up with a sealer. I'll be doing that coming real soon. Jen came out uh, with me yesterday and helped me roll the toolboxes in and other stuff that can easily be rolled out. So that way when I do the floor densifier and then we'll actually be getting to work pretty soon. So that'll wrap this one up. Just wanted to give a you know, build details overview. I know it's just rambling the whole time. So anybody that's stuck with me through, thank you guys very much for tuning in. You got any uh, comments or feedback or things you would like to see or do in here, feel free to drop those down below and uh, you know, just taking it real slow and steady. So thanks again for tuning in and see you guys in another video very soon. By the way, Jen just posted a new video today working on the boat. So go check that one out. If you haven't already seen her channel, Jennifer Sugent, I'll drop a link to it down below. Thanks guys. Oh, I guess we got to pop over to the Mr. Gus, man. That sounds weird in here without the echo. What are you doing? Just napping, huh? You made a big mess of the bed. This was fully made earlier. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> Daddy didn't make the bed today, did he? Yeah, you get the belly rubs. We'll take you out for a walk. Gus, you're showing everybody your weenie. Come on, what are you doing? Mr. Sleepy.